नमस्कार हेलो व्यूअर्स आई एम जयदीप शर्मा फ्रॉम द स्कूल ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस एंड वील बी डिस्कसिंग द कोर्स बी एल आई टू टू थ्री यू ऑल नो दैट दिस इज द थर्ड कोर्स ऑफ बैचलर ऑफ लाइब्रेरी इन्फॉर्मेशन साइंस एंड वी हैव फोर ब्लॉक्स इन दिस कोर्स एज यूजल इन एनी अदर कोर्स एज वी हैव एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर द फर्स्ट ब्लॉक दैट इज लाइब्रेरी क्लासिफिकेशन एंड टूडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट library cataloging and while we discuss this topic of this course we will start with cataloging in general we'll start with catalog and then we'll move on to library catalog and library cataloging in fact when you talk of catalog we'll start with the very basic forms of a catalog and then we'll move on to what is a catalog from the library perspective how it is different or more exhaustive or more specialized as far as catalogs are concerned otherwise as we encounter catalogs in our life you would all be very well aware of the various forms of the catalogs as they are known by different names that we all come across and we'll start with those examples like you have here on the screen a catalog Uh, this you are all very well aware of uh, winters being coming very very near and you find that such brochures you come across maybe online or in print also and yes that will be uh, an example to consider as i told you a very basic example of a catalog this is not called catalog as such but this is a catalog though you may call it as a brochure but you see here the dress items the jackets the winter apparels that you see here they are described here by means of photographs and also description about these are given so this is a very basic form similarly the another example that i have shown here on this screen is of a restaurant menu and this also a very basic form of a catalog you find the dishes have been described here along with their rates and all so you know the purpose of these two types of catalogs which are to describe the products or things that they are selling and this is for those who are their prospective buyers so this is this helps them market them this helps them the uh, customers to know what is available with them what is the variety of things what is the cost associated and so many things you come uh, to know from these uh, brochures or pamphlets which may be called as catalogs in general so when you talk of a catalog there are certain synonymous terms that you can think of that come to your mind list is one contents list a little ahead the of the term list inventory index bibliography references so we'll talk about these one by one when we start with a list we all know that listing of things is done when we have a number of things in mind we prepare a list it helps us to remember it helps us to recall it also helps us to do the things that we have to do and therefore we prepare a list of things going further ahead contents list you generally find this in different forms of literature like in books or even the files that you prepare you prepare a contents list and this is a sort of a summary of the things that are followed and while you provide this summary you also provide a location of the different facets of this summary the different aspects the different terms or different contents that have been described inside so when you talk of a list and you talk of a contents list there is a slight difference that it is a little more exhaustive it is little more descriptive in nature so the purpose is different the purpose in case of a list and purpose in ter uh, terms of contents list are slightly different and therefore the the description and design of these lists also varies between them now you come on to the third term that we listed that is inventory while we are talking of all these terms we want you to take 
we want to take you over to a library catalog so when you talk of an inventory inventory is list of things that you have with you you prepare of a list of whatever you have with you this may be applicable to a library also this may be applicable to an office this may be applicable to a go down so basically this inventory is prepared to have a control of what you have with you and this may keep on changing also maybe you may be spending these maybe you are consuming these so the inventory helps you to know the status of the things that you have with you so this may happen in a library also as you all know that the material that is there in a library is also the status of the things keep on changing therefore we should have an idea of this concept of inventory also now going to the third item in the list that is an index and you are very right the moment you heard of this term index what came to your mind is that that is something which is given at the back of a book yes you all would have seen index at the back of a book also you as students would have prepared a index uh, at the end of your file you used to prepare your project files you would always give an index at the end so index is generally appended at the end and this is little more exhaustive than the contents list you all know that contents list is broader in scope is more general in nature whereas an index that is there at the end is more exhaustive you may prepare an index from a particular point of view though while you give a broader index you may be also giving only the uh, titles themes sub themes that are contained in the text inside you just prepare a list of all these you arrange them in a particular order generally alphabetical order and then you also provide their places their location in the book or any other piece of literature that is there this index may be limited to one book it may also be limit may be available in a number of books you all know that a book may be spread over to a number of volumes also like you would have seen particularly reference books which are uh, which have multi volumes these volumes may run into even at times Uh, 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 maybe 20 25 30 40 50 50 now you can very well imagine that if the theme of a book is such that it runs into large number of volumes then consulting this book at times become difficult therefore the importance of the index you can very well imagine that this index at one place tells you what is mentioned in a particular volume what part of this subject has been discussed or described in which particular volume in which particular page naturally if the book is of let us say um, 10 20 volumes the number of pages may run into thousands of pages therefore it is not easy to really consult or refer to this multi volume book therefore there is the need of an index index also is very much needed and helpful in a book which discusses a topic in in depth in detail maybe it is multifaceted in nature maybe it is multidisciplinary in nature maybe it is interdisciplinary in nature so there also index helps but how does the index helps the index may be very simple just naming the concepts with the page number or maybe maybe little uh, different in approach it also describes the context in which a particular subject has been discussed there so index is really a very helpful tool you might be wondering that till now we have not really come to the term library catalog but all these terms are very important to know to learn about to also see how they are different what sort of functions they uh, they perform because knowing a catalog it is important to know all these now if you see the next term that we had introduced here in our screen was the bibliography bibliography is also 
a sort of a listing and you would have seen that bibliography is appended to a piece of text. It could be at a number of places in a book. It could be at, at the end of each chapter. So, and also a consolidated list at the end of the book. So, bibliography is again listing of different types of literature. It could be listing of books. It could be listing of different type of books that are there that have been consulted or used while preparing the document and this bibliography is arranged in a particular standard, in a particular style and helps us to reach documents beyond this document. While reading a particular book, the book may, the author may like you to read some more books related to it or may like you to read some more books that may have discussed the subject from a different point of view or from a different context, then the bibliography really helps you. Therefore, bibliography is another listing that is there and you very well know the purpose of a bibliography now. References. So, bibliography also has references, but when you say a bibliography and a reference, the, there is a slight difference between the two that reference is more exhaustive, is more detailed, is more specific in nature. You, while you give a reference, you give the exact position or exact location of that piece of literature which you would like the user to study or which you would have really referred while you prepare this document and therefore reference is more detailed, more precise, more specific whereas a bibliography can be more generic in nature. So these are all terms that we should understand while we really talk of cataloging or we'll talk of a catalog or a library catalog. I show you some examples here on your screen like table of contents. I have just taken from an example and not much uh, to say here as you all have seen table of contents. This is an example of an index. So if you compare the two, see how simple the table of contents is. You just find a lift, listing of the contents starting with preface and introduction and like that and on the right, extreme right, you find the page numbers have been mentioned. Whereas in case of an index, you find how the terms along with a number of pages that have been mentioned there have been mentioned here in this example. Whereas if you see this bibliography, you find that the uh, details of the books have been mentioned wherein starting with the author, the title, publisher and all such details, year of publication with different punctuation marks have been mentioned in this bibliography. So these are all examples of bibliography. Similarly, references, though uh, these are again similar to the bibliography, but as I mentioned to you that exact details have been mentioned and the, particularly when you talk of discussing things in depth, reference is very important. So now this is all related to a library catalog and library catalog is one of the types of catalogs as we have discussed earlier and these catalogs were uh, talk, you can uh, classify them as catalogs if you talk quite in general. But when you talk of uh, catalog a, a little, you go a little ahead, you can say that this could be a library catalog, this could be a trade catalog, this could be a publisher catalog, this could also be a union catalog. So the different names that exist, the purpose is different. The, uh, the purpose of having these catalogs varies. As we have seen some very small examples earlier, we have seen that purpose is different. So when you talk of a library catalog, the purpose is to serve the users in the library, to make them know the collection of the library. Uh, we will talk about it uh, in more detail. Similarly, when you talk of a trade catalog, it is the, the, the person who has produced a book. It may be a publisher, it could be a distributor. They prepare their catalogs just to market their products, just to let people know, those who are their potential customers, they should know what all they have published, 
where they have published, what are the contents of these. In fact, at times they also help let you preview all these. Technology has helped us to do it. So that is there in a trade or a publisher catalog. When you talk of a union catalog, union catalog is a catalog of more than one library. It could be two or more than two libraries. So when you talk of a library catalog, union catalog is nothing but a catalog of two or more than two libraries. And the purpose is that since libraries do not work in isolation, they work together with each other, joining hands with each other because no library is self-sufficient these days and therefore they work together co in cooperation and provide cooperative services. Therefore, Union Catalog is an example of such a catalog. Now, let us talk of the characteristics of a library catalog. We have just introduced library catalog. Now, we will talk of the characteristics, very simple characteristics. We will start from uh, the list of documents available in a library. So, uh, as we had said, it is a list. Therefore, well, you may say it is a list of documents available in a library. Now, you might be wondering that list is a very simple term. And when you say list, basically what you mean by list is that you have provided the, uh, the things in a numbered way, one after the other. And while preparing that list, you may provide some details of each uh, member of that list. So that details may vary from one to the other. But that does not happen because when you talk of a library catalog, it is very standardized and we'll come to know what are the contents of this list which is called library catalog. Moving further, it the list that is there of these books, it describes these books. Now again, you might be wondering, the next question that comes to my, your mind is, how do you describe a book? Well, you, do you describe it the way that this is good, this is a good read, or this talks about this, this does not talk about this? No. Basically, when you describe a book, you describe it from the point of view of its bibliographical details. That is why we introduce this term bibliography. So when you describe this book in a catalog, library catalog, you describe it bibliographically. You may also describe it from the point of view of its subject. We'll talk about these a little uh, later in detail. The entries uh, give the bibliographical details and they also give the subject details. And when you talk of subject details, they may also give a call number of a book. Now, what is the call number of a book? As you see, the term itself is quite explanatory, is quite descriptive. It is a number by which you can call a book. To explain this, let me tell you a, in little bit in detail that when you are talking of books in a library, you can very well imagine and you have all seen and experienced that a library consists of <coughs> a number of books. This list of books in a library <coughs> sorry, is always increasing. This list of books in a library is endless. Library, they say, is a growing organism. The number of books in a library is ever growing. So, this list is always on the increase. Also, this list of books that is there in a library is of different kinds and types <coughs> on different subjects for different kinds of users. Now, when you prepare a list, what is the purpose of preparing this list? Why do you need to prepare a list? Because we may be having our own books also in our personal libraries. We do not prepare catalogs. The, the reason is that these are our personal books. These are known to us. These are limited. These are limited from the point of view of subject also. We may still have to prepare uh, maybe short uh, uh, notes somewhere to know about these books. But generally we do not do so because these are all our personal collections. Maybe on this spline we may at times write about their authors or other things, but otherwise we do not do so. But in a library, as I told you, that this keeps on increasing and this is 
a variety for different types of users we need to have a control of this and there are two ways in which we have a control over this collection of books in a library one is library classification as you have learnt earlier that library classification involves organizing these books in a particular order these books that are available in the library are organized systematically and there are different ways in which we can organize them and we have un understood earlier while we discussed earlier that we organize them by subject because our user wants to have access to these books by subject therefore we organize them by subject then immediately the question that comes to our mind is why do we need a catalog we have already organized them we have put them in a particular order on the shelves then why do we need to have a catalog because we already have systemized all these books we have placed them in a particular pattern which is known to us particularly those who are the professional library staff who are there to help us so we can always trace any particular book that we want we can lay our hands on any particular book that we want because we have classified you are very right if you think in that way but as i told you that this list of documents or books in a library is ever growing it may run into any numbers it could be thousands it could be lakhs it could be more than that now these books are always taken out for use maybe outside the library also so this is one reason why should we make a inventory of this collection as i was discussing earlier that an inventory is something that helps us to know what we have what we have consumed what we do not right now have so this is the function of this library catalog that this acts as an inventory you know what all is there in the library and what all is not there in the library at the moment maybe it has been taken out for use somewhere in some section in the library or it has maybe taken out for use somewhere outside the library also maybe the library has a number of branches and this catalog helps us to know yes this particular book is in that branch in that department or within the same library itself this particular book is available in that section you all know every library has a reference section maybe the catalog provides a list of books of all sections thus a book on a particular subject may be available in a reference section may be available in a textbook section may be available somewhere in some section but has been temporarily taken out why there might be reasons one of the reasons may be that it has been issued to someone for use then how do you come to know as a user that it is there but right now it is not there so it is here the catalog helps us maybe the the book is uh, torn maybe it needs to be uh, the the, da the damage that has been done to the book it needs to be repaired and therefore temporarily the book has been sent to the bindery and then how do you come to know it is the catalog that helps you to know the book is there but right now it is not there so now i think you can very well understand though the library is organized it has been systematized but still the key to the library is not available to you so what is this key the ski is nothing but the library catalog so if you read books you will find one of the definitions of a library catalog is key to the holdings of a library so the mo the moment you use this catalog you are able to know what all is there in this library and where it is and right now where it is even a book that is lost in the library lost forever also is made available in this record and there is a mention that it has been lost so it is such a beautiful 
resource of the library which is called a library catalog. I show you here a picture of a library catalog with one of the drawers open. This is a very, though these are not, is not a modern catalog, I'll show you a modern catalog also, but this is a traditional catalog which you still find in libraries and I think you will identify if you visit your library, you will find this a wooden or a metallic drawer with sub drawers in it. This is a big one with small drawers in it and I have shown you with one of these drawers opened here and you would find here that this drawer that has been opened, you find a number of cards that are there inside and these cards are placed one after the other and while you want to really open this key to this library, you have to open this drawer, you have to move across these cards one after the other and this is how you come to know of the resources of the library. If you see this catalog, this wooden drawer cabinet that is there, this is called a cabinet, you find there is a, uh, just at the bottom there is a knob that you see, this knob is nothing but the, there is a long rod that is inserted in these cards. These cards are all perforated at the bottom. There is a small hole at the bottom in these cards and for all the cards this hole is at the same location, at the same place in the card and therefore when these cards are put together this rod can move through all these cards at the same time and this rod towards the end of this cabinet is tied there, is, there is a screw there and you tighten it there so that these cards can stand at one, in one position, one after the other. So what happens if this rod is not there? If this rod does not go through the holes, these cards will not stand in their place. That is why this rod is inserted inside these and this helps you to view these cards. So this is a very old and still prevalent form of a library catalog which you can see in libraries. I would request you, I would advise you all to visit some library nearby your location, maybe your home, maybe your office, maybe your place of study or research, whatever you are doing. Just visit a library and have a uh, feel of this catalog, feel of this cabinet and open it, try to open this rod also and see how it moves inside these cards and you will really uh, understand the concept and we, uh, what we have discussed till now is that we have talked about the various terms by which we indicate this uh, concept by which we mean a catalog in different walks of life. We have also discussed why catalog is important in a library in spite of the fact that we have organized the collection of a library that what we call as library classification and we have also shown you the picture of a catalog uh, which is a traditional catalog which is called a card catalog and we will keep discussing the concept of library catalog after a short break from now. So, uh, welcome viewers once again. 
we were discussing the library catalog and we had begun with the concept of a catalog. We had shown you different types of catalogs, rudimentary forms of catalogs, very basic forms of catalogs. Because when you talk of a library and you talk of the tools of a library, basically the difference between the collection of a library and collection of any other organization, a service organization is that the collection of a library has uh, intellectual objects. These are all intellectual objects and therefore while we arrange them, we have to arrange keeping in view the knowledge content that is there in these. Therefore, while we arrange them, we have not to arrange from the point of view of the physical carriers, but we have to arrange from what is contained in them. It is very important to know the contents of these documents and that is why we introduce the concept of the bibliography or references and while doing so we describe these carriers of knowledge by different characteristics that they possess. And while doing so we always keep in mind the need of the users because we are doing all this for the users. We are doing all this to facilitate they are used by the users. So while preparing different standards, while preparing different tools, while doing different operations, while designing different services, we always keep in mind our user, our different types of users, their different types of needs that they have. So therefore, when we have talked of the, we will talk of uh, catalog in uh, further detail, we always keep in view the two things. One is the users, their needs, their requirements and also the other thing is the documents that we are referring to. Now you see here in this picture on your screen, this is one of the most popular forms of a catalog which was there of a manual catalog because these days we have computerized catalogs. Why this was most accepted was because this catalog cards, they always allow things to be interpolated. You can always have new cards put in these cards that exist. And why do you need to put new cards within them? Why can't you put it after them? Because you put them in a systematic way. You would make it really easy for your user. That is why you want to have an order which is really easy for them. For that you have to think. That is why I said these things which are there, the collection that is there in a library, these are not things per se. These are not physical things. They contain some knowledge and you have to know what is this knowledge and what it, what it is there and for whom it is there. So as a librarian, as a service provider in a library, you have to think in terms of all these while designing a library catalog. So moving further, I'll show you the other uh, forms also. Like I mentioned to you about union catalog. So you see here on your screen examples of union catalog. Like the Indian Council of Social Science Research. It provides union catalog of social science periodicals and serials in India. Similarly, union catalog of CD-ROM databases in social science libraries in India. Just two examples for your uh, knowledge, you can just see, you can again visit or see the services of different types of libraries and you will find the examples of union catalogs. You are all very well aware of InfluimNet. You can visit the site of InfluimNet, Information Library Network. You will find that they also provide you union catalogs. You try to see the uh, website of NISPER and there again you will find the examples of union catalogs. So you find that without union catalogs, libraries do not function, particularly those libraries which have a scope which is uh, national in nature, which has a scope which may be regional in nature. So while providing their services, if they do not know what all is available in other libraries in their region or in their nation or across nations also, they will not be able to serve their users Therefore, union catalog is very important for them. Now, as I was mentioning to you earlier that 
the latest form of a catalog is a computerized catalog and you call it a online public access catalog of PEC. And here on the screen, I show you the example of the online public access catalog of the library of Indira Gandhi National Open University. And this catalog is reachable to you at any place, wherever you are, our learners, you can always access the collections of our library sitting at your own workplace or your own residence. We have a online public access catalog which is web enabled which is called a web opaque. So sitting at your location you can know what all our library has and you find here that the the uh, term library collection that is there on your screen here the moment you click this you will reach our library catalog and you will find different alternatives by which you can search the catalog you can search by the author you can search by the title you can search by the subject and you will immediately come to know whether the book is there with us in our library whether the book is there but has been issued to whom it has been issued so <coughs> this is the beauty of such a catalog and this is the our library where you come to know our collection that is there so you can very well access the collection of our library by our web opaque that I mentioned to you right now. <coughs> now let us see what is the purpose of a library catalog we have all discussed this earlier also just to put it in words it is to make known to the readers <coughs> what is available in the library this is the purpose of the library catalog as I told you, this is the key to a library collection means everyone can come to know what all is available in the library. That you can come and see also. But as I told you, while you come and see, some of this may not be available. Some of this may have been lent out. Some of this may have been misplaced. Some of this may have been available in different branch libraries or in different locations. Therefore, for all that, you need not to go there, you need not to have an idea, you need not to go and ask anyone, just you scan the library catalog and you come to know what all is there. And therefore, it is a list, it is a, it is a inventory also, it is a detailed list, it is an exhaustive list, it provides you the current status, that is the benefit and this is the purpose of the catalog. Now let us see what are the functions of a library catalog. As I told you earlier that it is it serves as a inventory. What all you have? Inventory. And a location tool also. See how an important function of this library catalog. Besides being an inventory it also acts as a location tool which I just now explained to you that the book is in binary, the book is under process, the book is lent out, the book is in the children's section. All these details you can very well know from the library catalog and that is why it is called in a, or a, it is a location tool also. It is to it is acts as a it acts as a guide to various kinds of resources it enables the users to reach their desired documents see this is a statement with a lot of intent what, what do you mean by this fact that it guides the users to their desired documents you can just think of a hypothetical situation a user comes to the library and he wants a particular book by a particular author on a particular subject with a particular title and he tries to locate that in the catalog. The catalog, uh, he reaches that document and he says yes it is there but the catalog guides him to more such documents and this the catalog does by means of particular types of entries which are called 
cross reference entries why does the catalog prepare and provide you cross reference entries because as a user you may have a need you may have a requirement but you may not be able to express it you may not be sure the way you are going about to satisfy your need and requirement is the correct way it is here the catalog performs a very important role it tells you you are wrong you may be needing this not this and how does it do it it provides you cross reference entries so it takes you to your desired book to your desired location to your desired information so it helps you not only by cross reference but also by other types of entries and this is done because browsing is possible browsing on the shelves browsing the catalog both are possible and therefore you may have certain sources of information in your mind but there might be some other sources of information which may provide you the information that you are looking for which may satisfy your needs and requirements better much better and it is here that this library catalog performs this role to reach you to that information so that is what is meant by this statement guide to various kinds of resources and enable the users to reach their desired documents so we may not be really sure that this is the desired document and in that case the library catalog performs this very important function to take us to the desired document please try this sometime and you will really appreciate this function of a library catalog now let us go to the objectives of a library catalog which have been given by different authorities and in that those given by charles ami cutter as long back as 1876 are still referred he has written book also and he has given these objectives which are Uh, which are often quoted even today with all the changing uh, circumstances and changes in the scholarly world and also in the literary world and in the world of disseminating knowledge and information with all this digitization the objectives of a library catalog are still relevant and what are these objectives number 1 to enable a person to find a relevant document of which the author is known or the title is known or the subject is known so this is the first most basic objective of a library catalog you as a user go to the library with a particular information in mind you are you need a book by so and so you are very clear about the author you know that this book has been authored by a by x you just go to the catalog to the alphabetical portion of the catalog to the author catalog you know catalogs are also of different kinds one of the kinds of the catalog is called a author catalog it just lists the different publications of different authors arranged in a alphabetical way so you want a book by a particular author since these are inverted the names are inverted you have to search by the the surname of the author start searching by the surname and in case that book is available in the library you will just at that particular location alphabetically you will reach that and that is what is called it enables a user to find a relic document of which the author is known or if you don't know the author you know the title then also it should help you to <coughs> reach that document or if the subject is known see this is little different from author and title because subject on a particular subject in number of authors would have written with a number of different titles so that is what is very important part of any catalog that is called the subject description that is called a subject catalog there are different ways of 
assigning subject to different documents and mentioning them in a catalog there are different styles of doing it there are different ways of doing it there are different tools of doing it like there are standard lists which are called list of subject headings there is a procedure like chain procedure chain indexing that was given by none other than sr ranganathan so libraries employ different tools and techniques and they describe the documents by subject and prepare subject catalogs and the objective as mentioned by charles sami cutter that if you have a particular subject in mind you should be able to reach that book by way of that subject to go further it also says to show what the library has by a given author by on a given subject in a different in a kind of literature or form of material see how different these two are in the first one you have a particular author in mind but in this one second one the library should be able to show all authors books by all authors that they have so in the first instance you had a particular author in mind and the catalog should serve your need there but in the second instance all authors who have authored the books which are available in the library should be searchable in your library catalog this is the difference between the two objectives similarly on different subjects or in different kinds of literature or in different forms of material like it could be a periodical it could be a textbook it could be a dictionary so that also the library catalog should help you to reach it similarly to assist in the choice of a document as to its edition as to its content and character as to its physical form you may like to read the fifth edition you may be interested in the 10th edition you may be interested in the second edition the library catalog should mention this ed document this edition should also mention whether this has a particular form and format this may be in different versions this may be in different forms the catalog should make available all these details should uncover honor should readily make it known to the user yes this document is this version is this edition is in this particular form this is in a micro form this is a micro fish this is a audio book this is a video this is this that is very important to mention by this now the functions of the library catalog as mentioned is to ascertain the availability of a particular document which can be specified by its author or title or subject it's not always important for the user to know everything he may be knowing any of these and the catalog should help the user to show the users the existing collection of the library that might have been written by a given author on a given subject on a given author also in a different given form of literature or material so these are the functions of a now if you see how ranganathan has described the functions of a library catalog you all know ranganathan had given the five laws of library science and when he describes the functions of a library catalog he describes in terms of his five laws you all know the first law books are for use he describes the functions of the library catalog from this if you do not make the users know what is there in the library how the books will be used so you have to disclose to the users the contents of these books the all these books contents in detail if you are able to show them you will be you will ensure that the first law of library science is satisfied similarly the second and third law every book its user every user is or her book you will not be able to do it if you are not able to publicize if you are not able to market it if you are not able to make it known to them so these are the functions similarly the fourth law is very important save the time of the user 
the catalog should be very helpful it should be self explanatory it should be non ambiguous and it should really provide what is needed by the user in what way he approaches the documents that approach is very important to be satisfied by this catalog otherwise the fourth law of library science save the time of the user will not be satisfied and that is what rangnathan says when he mentions the functions of a library catalog now we have just seen a form of a catalog two forms we have seen that is the uh, the card form and we have also seen the card catalog and we have seen the online public access catalog similarly there are inner forms of a catalog also the two which i mentioned earlier are called outer or external forms the inner forms of a catalog are the author catalog the title catalog the subject catalog dictionary catalog classified catalog <coughs> you have already i think by now would have understood that when you talk of a catalog you are talking of providing certain details of the different kinds of documents in a library in a particular order in a particular style and organizing them in organizing these so that it facilitates their use amongst the users so there is a order there is a grouping and there is an arrangement and arrangement is alphabetical alphabetical arrangement may also be of different kinds as we all know it could be letter by letter or it could be word by word there are different standards a library may opt one or the other similarly this standard could be followed now when you talk of your author catalog as mentioned a little while ago also you have a author catalog where the arrangement is by the names of authors there is a heading in the catalog and this heading is the author and the cards the information about the books every book information is arranged by the name of the author and such a catalog is called author catalog similarly if it arranges the information by title of the book such a catalog is called a title catalog so what is the purpose of a author catalog to enable a user to reach his or her required information by the name of the author or required document by the name of the author similarly the purpose of a title catalog is to enable the user or reader to reach his or her document or book by the title of the book that is called a title catalog i think it is comparatively simple when you talk in terms of author and title because these are all mentioned there in the book and you can very well do it but when you talk of a subject catalog you can very well imagine how difficult it is because it's not always clear what is the subject of the book you may have to see here and there you may have to read the contents page you may have to read about the book you may also have need to have the expertise of the subject to know what is the subject then you may have to express the subject in some standard terms also and that is how you prepare a subject catalog this subject catalog may also be in terms of certain numbers that is called a classified catalog now when you talk of a classified catalog this is also a subject catalog but this is classed classed in terms of class numbers so this is a little artificial in nature that is why a classified catalog is always in two parts the first part is classified the other part is alphabetical because a user may not be aware of the class numbers and to help the user to really use the classified part of the catalog you need to provide an access through the alphabets and that is what is called an alphabetical catalog and therefore a classified catalog is always in two parts it is called a bipartite catalog the classified portion the classed portion and the alphabetical portion the classed portion keeping all the related books one after the other uh, a providing you a panoramic image of the uh, the different types of books that are available on a particular subject and the alphabetical portion helping you to reach this classified part the other type of catalog is called a dictionary catalog 
and the dictionary catalog is different from a classified catalog because it provides all types of entries in one sequence whether it is a author or a title or in anything these are all put in one alphabetical sequence and that is what is called a dictionary catalog and these are the examples if you see here on your screen i show here a author catalog you see here uh, arranged by in the author in the heading this is a title catalog you find the title is there in the heading and this is a subject catalog you find the subject in the heading so these are the different inner forms this is the dictionary catalog and this is a classified catalog uh, these are the outer forms of a catalog as we have shown to you earlier also the card catalog the online public access catalog and some very rudimentary basic forms outer forms are the register form of a catalog or sheaf form which is a historical form of a catalog which used to be in sheaf form so we have discussed today starting with the concept of a catalog how it is prevalent in outside the library also and what is the purpose of a catalog and what is the purpose of a library catalog the objectives of a catalog library catalog as have been given by authorities which have all been discussed in your course material also you need to study this uh, course bli 223 wherein you will find the block 2 discussing all these concepts and you will find references also there so this will really come to know you will by reading all this you will come to know all that we have discussed today and i will also advise you to visit libraries to visit online catalogs of libraries also and see how this catalog talks to you while you are searching it this is interactive in nature while you have certain things in your mind what you what is going on inside your mind you ask the catalog it helps you it talks back to you and therefore this that is why you call it is interactive in nature and particularly the automated catalogs and i think this will really help you to search the uh, the uh, resources of a library and not only one but more than one library also in case it is a union catalog so i think uh, uh, this will really help you to study better and in case you have any queries you can get back to us on our email id thank you